A resistance movement is an organized effort by some portion of the civil population of a country to withstand the legally established government or an occupying power and to disrupt civil order and stability. It may seek to achieve its objectives through either the use of nonviolent resistance sometimes called civil resistance, or the use of force, whether armed or unarmed. In many cases, as for example in Norway in the Second World War, a resistance movement may employ both violent and nonviolent methods, usually operating under different organizations and acting in different phases or geographical areas within a country. On the lawfulness of armed resistance movements in international law, there has been a dispute between states since at least 1899, when the first major codification of the laws of war in the form of a series of international treaties took place. In the preamble to the 1899 Hague Convention II on Land War, the Martins Clause was introduced as a compromise wording for the dispute between the great powers who considered Frank's tirers to be unlawful combatants subject to execution on capture and smaller states who maintained that they should be considered lawful combatants. More recently the 1977 Protocol additional to the Geneva Conventions of 12 August 1949, and relating to the protection of victims of international armed conflicts, referred in Article 1. Paragraph 4 to armed conflicts. In which peoples are fighting against colonial domination and alien occupation and against racist regimes. This phraseology contains many ambiguities that cloud the issue of who is or is not a legitimate combatant. Hence depending on the perspective of a state's government, a resistance movement may or may not be labeled a terrorist group based on whether the members of a resistance movement are considered lawful or unlawful combatants and whether they are recognized as having a right to resist occupation. Ultimately, the distinction is a political judgment. etymology. <inaudible> <inaudible> The modern usage of the term, resistance, originates from the self designation of many movements during World War II, especially the French Resistance. The term is still strongly linked to the context of the events of 1939 45, and particularly to opposition movements in Axis occupied countries. Using the term, resistance, to designate a movement meeting the definition prior to World War II might be considered by some to be an anachronism. However, such movements existed prior to World War II albeit often called by different names, and there have been many after it, for example in struggles against colonialism and foreign military occupations. Resistance has become a generic term that has been used to designate underground resistance movements in any country. <laughs> Background Resistance movements can include any irregular armed force that rises up against an enforced or established authority, government, or administration. This frequently includes groups that consider themselves to be resisting tyranny. Some resistance movements are underground organizations engaged in a struggle for national liberation in a country under military occupation or totalitarian domination. Tactics of resistance movements against a constituted authority range from nonviolent resistance and civil disobedience, to industrial sabotage and guerrilla warfare, or even conventional warfare if the resistance movement is strong enough. Any government facing violent acts from a resistance movement usually condemns such acts as terrorism, even when such attacks target only the military or security forces. Resistance during World War II was mainly dedicated to fighting the Axis occupiers. Germany itself also had an anti-Nazi German resistance movement in this period. Although the United Kingdom did not suffer invasion in World War II, preparations were made for a British resistance movement in the event of a German invasion see auxiliary units. <laughs> <laughs> Geographies of resistance When we talk about geographies of resistance, we often take for granted that resistance takes place in the spaces where domination, power, or oppression is present. So, resistance is often understood as something that always opposes to power or domination. However, some scholars believe and argue that looking at resistance in relation to only power and domination will not provide us a full understanding of the actual nature of resistance. Not all power, domination or oppression leads to resistance, and not all cases of resistance are against or to oppose what we categorize as «power». In fact, they believe that resistance has its own characteristics and spatialities. In Steve Piles 1997, 
Opposition, Political Identities and Spaces of Resistance, Geographies of Resistance show that people are positioned differently in unequal and multiple power relationships, that more or less powerful people are active in the constitution of unfolding relationships of authority, meaning and identity, that these activities are contingent, ambiguous and awkwardly situated, but that resistance seeks to occupy, deploy and create alternative spatialities from those defined through oppression and exploitation. From this perspective, assumptions about the domination-resistance couplet become questionable. We can better understand resistance by accounting different perspectives and by breaking the presumptions that resistance is always against power. In fact, resistance should be understood not only in relations to domination and authority, but also through other experiences, such as, "...desire and anger, capacity and ability, happiness and fear, dreaming and forgetting." Meaning that resistance is not always about the dominated versus the dominator, the exploited versus the exploiter, or the oppressed versus the oppressor. There are various forms of resistance for various reasons, which then can be, again, classified as violent and nonviolent resistance and other, which is unclear. Different geographical spaces can also make different forms of resistance possible or impossible and more effective or less effective. Furthermore, in order to understand any resistance, its capacity to achieve its objective effectively, its success or failure, we need to take closely into account many variables, such as political identities, cultural identities, class, race, gender and so on. The reason is that these variations can define the nature and outcome of resistance. Harvey 1993, who looked at resistance in relations to capitalist economic exploitation, took on a fire accident happened in the Imperial Foods Chicken Processing Plant in Hamlet, North Carolina in 1991, in which 20 of 200 workers were killed and 56 were injured due to poor working conditions and protections. He compared this accident with a similar fire accident at Triangle Shirtwaist Company, New York, 1911, killing 146 workers, which caused a labor resistance by 100,000 people. He argued that no resistance took place in response to the fire accident in Hamlet because most of the people who died there were black and women workers, and he believed that not only class but also other identities such as race, gender, and sexuality were important factors in understanding nature and outcome of resistance. For an effective resistance, he proposed that four tasks should be undertaken First, social justice must be defined from the perspective of the oppressed, second, a hierarchy of the oppressions has to be defined, third, political actions need to be understood and undertaken in terms of their situatedness and position in dynamic power relations, and finally, an epistemology capable of telling the difference between different differences has to be developed. There are many forms of resistance in relations to different power dominations and actors. Some resistance takes place in order to oppose, change, or reform the exploitation of the capitalist economic systems and the capitals, while other resistance takes place against the state or authority in power. Moreover, some other resistance takes place in order to resist or question the social, culture norms or discourse or in order to challenge a global trend called, globalization. For example, LGBT social movements is an example of resistance that challenges and tries to reform the existing cultural norms in many societies. Resistance can also be mapped in various scales ranging from local to national to regional and to global spaces. We can look at a big-scale resistance movement such as anti-globalization movement that tries to resist the global trend of capitalist economic system. Or we can look at the internal resistance to South African apartheid, which took place at national level. Most, if not all, social movements can be considered as some forms of resistance. Not all resistance takes place in physical spaces or geographies but in «other spaces» as well. Some resistance happens in the form of protest art or in the form of music. Music can be used and has been used as a tool or space to resist certain oppression or domination. Gray Rosendale, L. 2001 put it this way, Music acts as a rhetorical force that sanctions the construction of the boys' new black urban subjectivities that both challenge urban experience and yet give voice to it. Music contributes a way to avoid physical and psychological immobility and to resist economic and cultural adaptation. And challenges the social injustice prevalent within the northern economy. In the age of advanced IT and mass consumption of social media, resistance can also occur in the cyberspace. 
The Aboriginal Health and Medical Research Council of NSW's Tobacco Resistance and Control a track team created a Facebook page to help promote anti-smoking campaign and rise awareness for its members. Sometimes, resistance takes place in people's minds and ideology or in people's inner spaces. For example, sometimes people have to struggle within or fight against their inner spaces, with their consciousness and, sometimes, with their fear before they can resist in the physical spaces. In other cases, people sometimes simply resist to certain ideology, belief, or culture norms within their minds. These kinds of resistance are less visible but very fundamental parts of all forms of resistance. Topic. Controversy regarding definition Some definitions of resistance movement have proved controversial. According to Joint Publication 102, the United States Department of Defense defines a resistance movement as, "...an organized effort by some portion of the civil population of a country to resist the legally established government or an occupying power and to disrupt civil order and stability." In strict military terminology, a resistance movement is simply that, it seeks to resist change the policies of a government or occupying power. This may be accomplished through violent or nonviolent means. In this view, a resistance movement is specifically limited to changing the nature of current power, not to overthrow it, and the correct military term for removing or overthrowing a government is an insurgency. However, in reality many resistance movements have aimed to displace a particular ruler, especially if that ruler has gained or retained power illegally. <inaudible> Freedom Fighter Freedom Fighter is another term for those engaged in a struggle to achieve political freedom for themselves or obtain freedom for others. Though the literal meaning of the words could include, "...anyone who fights for the cause of freedom." In common use it may be restricted to those who are actively involved in an armed rebellion, rather than those who campaign for freedom by peaceful means, or those who fight violently for the freedom of others outside the context of an uprising though this title may be applied in its literal sense. Generally speaking, freedom fighters are people who use physical force to cause a change in the political and or social order. Notable examples include Umkanto we Sizwe in South Africa, the Sons of Liberty in the American Revolution, the Eritrean People's Liberation Front, and the National Resistance Army in Uganda, which were considered freedom fighters by supporters. However, a person who is campaigning for freedom through peaceful means may still be classed as a freedom fighter, though in common usage they are called political activists, as in the case of the Black Consciousness Movement. In India, freedom fighter is an officially recognized category by the Indian government covering those who took part in the country's independence movement people in this category can also include dependent family members get pensions and other benefits like special railway counters people described as freedom fighters are often also called assassins rebels insurgents or terrorists this leads to the aphorism one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter the degree to which this occurs depends on a variety of factors specific to the struggle in which a given freedom fighter group is engaged. During the Cold War, the term freedom fighter was first used with reference to the Hungarian rebels in 1956. Ronald Reagan picked up the term to explain America's support of rebels in countries controlled by communist states or otherwise perceived to be under the influence of the Soviet Union, including the Contras in Nicaragua, UNITA in Angola, and the multi factional Mujahideen in Afghanistan. In the media, an effort has been made by the BBC to avoid the phrases, terrorist or freedom fighter, except in attributed quotes, in favor of more neutral terms such as militant, guerrilla. Assassin, insurgent, rebel, paramilitary, or militia. Topic: <laughs> Common weapons. Partisans often use captured weapons taken from their enemies, or weapons that have been stolen or smuggled in. During the Cold War, partisans often received arms from either NATO or Warsaw Pact member states. Forces sympathetic to the communist ideology often received aid from the latter in the form of military equipment. Where partisan resources are stretched, improvised weapons are also deployed. <laughs> <laughs> examples of resistance movements <laughs> 
The following examples are of groups that have been considered or would identify themselves as groups. These are mostly, but not exclusively, of armed resistance movements. For movements and phases of activity involving nonviolent methods, see civil resistance and nonviolent resistance. Topic: Pre-20th century. The Sakari were a 1st century Jewish movement opposing Roman occupation of the Jewish Promised Land. Pemulwuy, the first Aboriginal Australian to resist the British. In 1797, a state of guerrilla warfare existed between indigenous people and the settler communities in Sydney. The Aboriginals were led by Pemulwuy, a member of the Bijigal tribe who occupied the land. He was eventually shot and killed by British sailor Henry Hacking in 1802. The American Continental Forces of the American Revolutionary War were essentially a resistance movement against the British Empire. The 1808 invasion of Spain by Bonaparte sparked a resistance movement composed mostly of the lower classes, who felt that the nobility was simply allowing themselves to fall under French control. Lord Wellington remarked that it was extraordinary that the French had managed to remain in the country for so long about four years. Carbonari 19th century Italian movement resisting Austrian or Bourbon rule. The Polish national government, underground Polish supreme authority during the January uprising against Russian occupation of Poland. During 1863–64 it was a real shadow government supported by majority of Poles, who even paid taxes for it, and was a significant problem for Russian secret police Okrana. Andres Avelino Caceres resistance, Andean resistance movement against invading Chilean forces during the War of the Pacific. Jandamara, the first indigenous Australian to use fire arms and conduct organised warfare in battle against the British, led a war against Euro-Australian colonists for three years, from 1894 to 1897. Resistance movement ended when Jandamara was shot dead by a native tracker. Sali, Cherokee tribal member who led a small band of Cherokee people against the United States military during the Trail of Tears era. Executed in exchange for the survival of his band, the band were integrated into the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. Osceola, Seminole chief who was very influential. Resisted deportation during the Indian removal era. Led a number of successes until being captured by the United States during faux peace talks, died a few months later in prison. Francis Marion was an American Revolutionary War partisan who led a partisan guerrilla movement against the British. Bushwhackers were Confederate guerrillas who engaged in raids, robberies, and massacres against the Union forces and affiliated citizens. Continued resisting for some years after the American Civil War ended. Responsible for the Lawrence Massacre Jayhawkers were Union guerrillas who engaged in the same acts as the bushwhackers did, they were also active during Bleeding Kansas. Most prominent member was John Brown, responsible for the Potawatomi Massacre and John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry. The Yellow Turbans were peasant rebels against the Eastern Han Dynasty, led by Zhang Zhu, was crushed due to lack of coordination with other Yellow Turban groups as well as destabilization. The Abbasid Revolution overthrows the Umayyad dynasty under Abu Muslim, was caused by discrimination against non-Arab Muslims and government corruption. The Mamluks were Turkic slaves who overthrew the Ayyubid dynasty. The Jacobite Risings were a series of rebellions, uprisings, and wars to reinstate the Stuart dynasty. The Katas Tossing, Ka Galing Galingong, Katipunan ng Mga Anak ng Bayan was an organization in the Philippines which instigated the Philippine Revolution in 1896 against the Spanish colonials. The result was the dissolution of the Republic of Biak na Bato and the exile of the Philippine government, headed by Emilio Aguinaldo. <laughs> Pre-World War II Filipino guerrilla units after official end of Philippine-American War 1902 Charlemagne Peralt and his Cacos rebels who resisted the United States occupation of Haiti. Rise of the Ukrainian Army 1918 Forest guerrillas Augusto César Sandino led a rebellion against the United States occupation of Nicaragua Lawau Eaglets Black Lions 1936 Irish Republican Army 1918 to 1922 
TIGR Italy 1927 to 1941 Topic World War II Planned resistance movements the Auxiliary Units, organized by Colonel Colin Gubbins as a potential British resistance movement against a possible invasion of the British Isles by Nazi forces, note that it was the only resistance movement established prior to invasion, albeit the invasion never came. Volunteer Fighting Corps Japan. <laughs> Post-World War II Kosovo Liberation Army Notable individuals in resistance movements <inaudible> World War II anti-Nazi, anti-fascist etc. <inaudible> Other resistance movements and figures <inaudible> See also <inaudible> Notes Topic References Gardam, Judith Gale, nineteen ninety three. Noncombatant Immunity as a Norm of International Humanitarian, Martinist Nyhoff ISBN 0 7923 2245 2. Ticehurst, Rupert. The Martin's Clause and the Laws of Armed Conflict, the thirtieth of April, nineteen ninety seven. International Review of the Red Cross, number no. three hundred seventeen, pp. one hundred twenty five to thirty four. ISSN fifteen sixty to seven thousand seven hundred fifty five.